So Mariam, everything revised of the last class? All right. In the last class we started with definite integration. Right? Definite integration is nothing too fancy. Just if you have f of x dx, right, they will put limits on it. This is called lower limit. This is called upper limit. So what you have to do? Integrate this function without caring about the limits. All right. Suppose the integration of this is capital F of x. Then what you do? First put upper limit in place of x. Then you put lower limit subtract them that will be the answer all right i'll show you by one question let's right, just integrate this function without caring about the limits everyone else please try to solve it Where is answer pi by two? Let's see. So integration of this is sine inverse x right so i did not care about the limits i just integrated this function now what you have to do 
put the upper limits put the lower limit all right so sign inverse one is pi by two and inverse zero is zero this is the answer all right so i did uh, a square minus x square all right so value put the value of a as one I got five by two. Five by two, right? Yeah. So this is the final answer. Five by two. So this method, this method is also correct, right? Absolutely. You can use that formula, but uh, this formula we know directly, right? The differentiation of sine inverse x is one upon one minus x per under. All right. Okay, sir. Madam, this is clear. All right. Next question. Integration two to three. Dx upon square minus one. You guys can use partial fractions in this dx upon x minus one x plus one. This is all right.
All right. So what you can do, you can use partial fractions. One upon x plus one, x minus one equals to a upon x plus one, a upon x minus one. Now you can solve this. Or what you can do? Just add this x plus one minus x minus one. I can write. Like, so this is x plus one minus x plus one. So I multiplied with two. So I have to divide by two. So this is half two three integration x plus one. I can separate this x minus one, x plus one, x minus one, x plus one. This is cancelled. This is cancelled. So now what we have half integration two to three one upon x minus one. <laughs> dx minus integration two to three one upon x plus one. And sorry for this, I'm not very well today. Now you guys can integrate this very easily. This is log of All right, this is half when you put three, log three minus one is two minus when you put two log one minus log four minus log three. I hope this is clear to all of you. Yes or no, log one is zero. You can figure out the final answer. Half log two minus log four plus log three. So half log A plus log B is log AB minus log C is log AB upon C. So three by two. Is everyone clear about this? Yes or no? You can reply on chat also if your mic is not working. Yes. Ahmed, Alan, Jiva, Mariam, Tinza. All right. All right, solve it. I hope you remember how to solve this one. Use cos 2 theta formula, which is 1 minus 2 cos square theta minus 1.
सॉल्व इट एवरीवन फ्रॉम दिस फॉर्मूला व्हाट यू कैन डू टू कॉस्कर थीटा इज वन प्लस कॉस टू थीटा सो कॉस्कर थीटा इज वन प्लस कॉस टू थीटा बाय टू राइट सो दिस इज जीरो टू पाई बाय टू वन प्लस कॉस टू थीटा अपॉन टू so half is outside integration of 1 is <coughs> instead of theta we'll write x so instead of 1 this is x plus cos 2x integration you can tell me integration of cos 2x साइन टू एक्स बाई टू भाई देखो इंटीग्रेशन अगर नहीं करोगे ढंग से तो आगे के दो चैप्टर भी गायब होने वाले इफ यू कैन नॉट इंटीग्रेट थिंग्स इफ यू हैव रिवाइज इंटीग्रेशन इफ यू आर नॉट गुड एट इंटीग्रेशन देन दी नेक्स्ट टू चैप्टर्स आर ऑल्सो वेरी वेरी गोइंग टू बी डबल सम फॉर यू All right, everyone. Anyone has any issues in integration? You can be very honest with me. Zaid, are you okay with integration? Yes. Ahmed Usman, are you okay with integration? If you do not respond, I'll assume this is a no. Sure. All right, Alan, what about you? Yes, I'm fine with it. All right, Jiva. Anyone who does not respond, I'll assume that is a no, and will. arrange extra classes for him or her all right kinza so limit questions are a bit confusing which questions the limits where we apply the limits we apply it so like uh, this definite integration right yeah yeah definite integration all right mariam integration is okay not much all right then you should be telling me that right that we are not okay with integration all right so what we are going to do we are going to give you all the lectures again all right mariam please watch it go through it if you find any doubts anywhere then talk to the team we'll arrange a class for you all right and do that as soon as possible Because uh, we are going to need integration in the remaining chapters. Only on inverse and formula parts. All right. So Jiva, I'll be telling the team to send you also the links. So please watch it again, and we'll keep an extra class for you if you have any issues after that also. All right. And Mohammed Ahmed, uh, is this the name you? come to the class always yes all right so you are okay with integration yeah all right <clears throat> and can sir look at this uh, limits are nothing special forget the limits just integrate this all right <clears throat> so i integrated this now what you have to do look at the upper limit and wherever you see x just put the value pi by 2 Plus sine two into pi by two by two. All right. Yes, sir. And minus put the lower limit in place of x. Zero plus sine two into zero 
by two. Why I applied the brackets? Because we have a negative sign offset. <clears throat> All right. Yes, sir. So this is zero. This is zero. Pi by two. <clears throat> Sine pi is also zero. So this is pi by four. I hope this answer is clear to all of you. Yes, sir. All right, note it down. I'll give you ten minutes. Yes. Uh, any issues? Anyone? All right. All right. So next topic is definite integration using substitution. All right. So if you have a question one to two, two x upon one plus x square t. So if they give you this question without the limits, integration of this 2x upon 1 plus x squared dx, we are going to use substitution. So in this integration also, we are going to use substitution. So what we'll do, 1 plus x squared is t. So 2x dx is dt. Right, everyone? Yes, sir. So just replace. This is dt upon t so this is log t right so if this is log t then the value of t is 1 plus x square so log 1 plus x square I'll limit 1 to 2 1 to all right limits 1 to 2 so log of first upper limit so 1 plus 2 square is 5 and minus log of 1 plus 1 square is 2. So log 5 by 2. This is one method that you use substitution, then put the values again and put the limits. What is the other way? If you substitute the value 1 plus x square as t, then when they are saying the lower limit is 1, the value of x is 1, then what will be the value of t? 1 plus 1 square, which is 
and when it is 2 t will be 1 plus 2 square which is 5 so you can directly change the limits here also dt by t 2 to 5 so this is log mod t 2 to 5 you can put the limits directly you do not have to do not change the value of t again to 1 plus x square so this will be log 5 minus log 2 so log 5 by 2 the answer will always be same is it clear everyone all right only said responded everyone else yes sir yes sir all right note it down then Done, sir. All right. Can I understood this? Yes, sir. All right. Zero to one x upon x squared plus one dx.
Dan so. All right, everyone.
as everyone solve it ln ahmed jiva so Okay, I was muted. <laughs> My bad. All right, all right, all right. Uh, I said, uh, please mark this down as an important question. And there is only one way to solve this question. All right. So this question is x minus x cube to the power one upon three upon x to the power four dx. So what you have to do? Always take the maximum power common from the numerator. All right, maximum power is x cube. So I took x cube common. So what remains in the brackets? X upon x cube minus one whole to the power one upon three. This step is clear to all of you. Yes, sir. All right. So this is x cube to the power one upon three. One upon x square minus one. I did not do anything special. Just broke down the powers. So x cube to the power one upon three is x. X and x to the power four can be cancelled. So what it means is. X cube. Right. These steps are compulsory. If you have to solve this type of questions, you cannot skip any step. Now, what you have to do? Always put the numerator as t. All of this. One upon x square minus one as t. All right. So what happens? Minus one upon x cube dx is dt. So dx upon x cube is minus one upon two dt, right? So you can replace this using substitution. You can solve this very easily. So please find the answer. I'll give you a few minutes. The steps are clear, everyone. So could you explain the steps again? All right. What I did in the first step is take highest power of x common, right? So inside what remains x upon x cube. Minus one because here it was x cube. Now, if you remember this, a b whole cube is a cube b cube, right? We can break down the powers. So this is x cube into this. So what I did? X cube to the power one upon three. This to the power one upon three. In the denominator, x to the power four. All right. So, so this is x and x cube, uh, x to the power four. So x cube remains, everything remains same. Now what I did, I took the numerator as four as t without the powers, one upon x square minus one is t. Now we know how to do substitution. All right. So please find out the answer. Now is it clear, everyone? Yes, sir. All right. Note it down from the starting step. Please try to do without looking at the screen. On your own. Having problem in finding t and dt. You're having finding the uh, at what? Uh, in every question, like when I do NCRT, I get problem while finding what is t and what is dt. 
what should be the approach what is tndt like in substitution yes sir all right in substitution you have to think about differentiation right always if the better you are at differentiation the better you will be at substitution right suppose i give you sin x cos x dx so your first instinct should be that we know that differentiation of sin x is cos x so if you write sin x as t because in the next step we differentiate this right cos x dx is dt getting my point so always look for function and its differentiation as soon as you see that in the numerator i looked at this and i instinctively knew that 1 upon x square if you differentiate this becomes 1 upon x cube right yes so 1 upon x cube is there and then i looked that minus 1 doesn't matter to me because minus 1 differentiation is zero so i can take the whole numerator as t all right sir yes sir but uh, sir in the previous question what is t and what is dt i got wrong answer the previous question x by x square plus 1 yeah that one. all right <clears throat> so there are only two functions here right x and the denominator right so can you tell me if you can see the function whose differentiation is also there x square will be 2x right x square will be t if you put then 2x will be dt 2x dx right yes so this 2 you can throw to this side so x dx can be half dt right so you can yes. substitute this no issues what else you can do you can see that x square differentiation is 2x dx x square plus 1 differentiation is also 2x dx so our job becomes easier if you put the whole denominator as t all right this is clear yes sir all right so please solve this question start from the first step sir yes uh what did you uh, what you did in the fourth step this step uh this step where you wrote 1 by x square minus 1 yes that one. all right i did not do anything uh, specially this is x cube to the power 1 upon 3 right so x cube to the power 1 upon 3 becomes x yes so x and x upon x to the power 4 is 1 upon x cube so i just cancelled this thing with the denominator oh okay all right yes
Can everyone? Yes or no? Yes, sir. All right. So please get the answer. If you cannot, then ask me in the next class. Let's start the next topic, properties of definite integration. properties of definite integration what is the first property if you have integration a to b f of x dx and this will be equal to a to b f of t dt what this means you can change the variable and it doesn't matter right we can change the variable, just the name of the variable, and everything remains same. All right. Let me give you an example also. If we have zero to pi by two cos x dx, this will be same as zero to pi by two cos t dt all right everyone not so very difficult second one a to b f of x px this is a bit important one if you change the limits upper limit becomes lower lower becomes upper then you have to use the negative sign right Integration becomes negative if you change the limits. And third one is very, very, very important. All the questions, like maximum questions will be based on this only. Right, write down this two. A to B f of x dx is integration a to b f of a plus b minus x dx very 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 important what this means you can replace the value of x with addition of two limits minus x all right Everyone is, cool. Everyone is cool with this? Yes, sir. All right, note it down, please.
write down the fourth property if you have 0 to a f of x dx this you can write it as 0 to a f of a minus x dx like this property is based on this property if you can see right you put the lower limit as 0 upper limit as a we just added those together minus x so this property and this property are same or derived from the other one note it down tell me when you're done Done, sir. Okay, then I hope this thing is clear to all of you. Please revise and Kinza, Mariam, to get the recorded lectures. Jiva also.